I've done quite a few projects that use machine learning to recognise people and objects, including recognising simple symbols, hand gestures and also facial expression. I generally use an NVIDIA Jetson Nano running Jetson Inference because lots of tools are provided by NVIDIA which make it really accessible. It's just a case of installing the latest Jetpack SD image and then installing Jetson Inference from the instructions. There are also Docker images if you prefer. Then it's as simple as plugging in a Raspberry Pi camera and running DetectNet or one of the other examples that uses a ready-trained model. There are also GUI tools for retraining from your own image sets or images captured from your own camera. Detecting people and objects was therefore very easy, but now there's something new and I wanted to test it out. Yes, it's PoseNet which uses a 2D camera like a Raspberry Pi camera to detect and display a skeleton of a person. Yes, all from the same 2D Raspberry Pi camera or USB webcam. All you have to do is type PoseNet once everything is installed. There are also Python examples provided so you can hack around and build your own project. I added a few lines of code and an if statement which looks at the XY position of my head and neck nodes and works out if I'm looking left or right. So we can use this to make a gesture recognition interface and I do actually have a use for this. So if you remember my videos from a few years ago, I built something called Performance Robots, which were two heavy duty robots designed to work day after day at events. Now I haven't done many events because of the pandemic and most of them have been shut down. I did do one event though before that at the v &A Museum in Dundee. So what we've got is two interactive robots that anyone can operate using accessible interfaces like big knobs you can turn, floor pressure pads and big accessible buttons. But of course with the pandemic and hygiene, what do we do when events start up again because I don't really want loads of people touching all the buttons because we repeatedly have to go and sanitize them and keep it all clean and do a risk assessment and everything like that. So instead of that we're going to build an interface using gesture recognition so no one has to touch it. Now those robots are controlled by something called DMX which is intended to be used for lighting installations in clubs and on stage. That's because there's already quite a lot of DMX software out there and I'm using QLC Plus which is open source. It also means that we can interface with MIDI and OSC which is a network protocol and stands for open sound control. So using the Python OSC library I can modify my Python script running on the Jetson to send OSC messages which I can then use to control DMX on MIDI devices. I've implemented a simple slider in QLC Plus which is linked to my simple head turning example. Then using a DMX interface, and I'm just using a USB to RS-485 converter in a 3D printed box because DMX is just serial data running over RS-485, I can control DMX lights like this lighting bar or anything else including my performance robots. However, performance robots are on holiday in a storage unit at the moment so I'm going to take the robot I built a couple of weeks ago, add some additional bits to it and turn that into a DMX controlled robot. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I've used these servos which have metal brackets and that makes it very easy to make structures with them, so I've made two arms and those are fitted onto a stand with a base and a top and the arms are just fitted onto some brackets there onto 2020 extrusion which I can bolt on with T-nuts and slide up and down. And so the head I made last time fits just on top there. And that's the completed robot that can substitute for performance robots with arms and a head that moves. I've put my Arduino Mega on the back and that's got a DMX shield so we can easily receive that data and I've attached that to Serial 1 so we can still use the USB serial interface for debug. I fitted the Raspberry Pi camera on a bracket so we can adjust it up and down. I've used some perma proto boards to make a breakout for those servos so they all get power and servo PWM from the Arduino. But before we see how that goes, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry and they provide high quality low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just select your shipping destination and click on quote now and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. Save it to your cart and enter your shipping information. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1-4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. 
JLC PCBs ship worldwide and they have fast build times so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. So now using the Arduino DMX serial library, it's very easy to read those DMX values from the DMX interface and use a little bit of code to map them to the servo motions. So I've got one slider for each axis here, and you'll notice those motions are quite smooth, and that's because I'm still using the smoothing code that I showed you in the last video about the robot head, and I've applied that to the arms as well, so even if I make sudden motions with the sliders, we get that nice deceleration as they fall into position. In the DMX software, we've got this concept of scenes, which are groups of sliders in fixed positions, each with a name. So you can see as I scroll through them, the sliders move in the bottom portion of the screen, in groups, whatever is assigned to those motions, and the robot moves accordingly. Now bear in mind that these would be groups of lights shining different colours and intensities, and for that reason we've got this concept of chasers that would be lighting effects which are sequenced. I've set them up to run in a loop and you'll notice I can specify the time for each part of the sequence. I can also specify the fade in and fade out time, which basically means we get smooth motion between the two, as it would be doing a lighting fade between two different lighting effects. So now if we go and look at the virtual console while we're going through one of those, we can see that we get this lovely smooth motion of the faders that are controlling all the axes. And on top of that, I've got the Arduino smoothing going on, actually smoothing the servos, which takes off the sharp edges as well. The last part of the puzzle is this screen with lots of buttons on that I can assign to the chasers, and that's what I'd use to control lighting if I were a DJ at a wedding or something. The red boxes are exclusivity, so any of the buttons in there, when I select another one it deselects the previous one, and I can deselect it again by clicking on it again. So I can set off all of those chasers on the right and left arm and the head, and just leave them running, and they run in a loop until another one is selected. Now I can assign those virtual buttons to physical buttons like this Novation Launchpad which you can use for DJing and stuff with Ableton Live and that's also supported by QLC and that's basically how my accessible interfaces work that I have already. However, I don't want anyone to touch it, so what I'm going to do instead is use OSC data being sent by the Jetson Nano and that Python script from the skeleton tracking to activate those buttons. This is the Nvidia demo for PoseNet and as you can see, it will track everybody in the scene with absolutely no problems. However, this is a bit of a problem, because if I'm at a show, and there's lots of people crowding around seeing what's going on, and people walking around in the background, then it won't know who to track, or who's controlling the robot. Ultimately, I want to see who's closest to the camera, and let them control the robot. So I looked at which of the detections has the eyes the furthest apart, and assumed they must be closest to the camera. That then means I can ignore everyone else and just use the data from that pose object that contains all of the skeleton data for each person detected. So then it was just a simple case of comparing my elbow and my shoulder node in a vertical axis to see which one was higher or if they were in the middle within a certain threshold, and sending an OSC message to QLC to press the right button. I also compared the data with a bookmark variable from the last loop to check that the data had actually changed and I wasn't just flooding the network with OSC messages on every loop, so it only sends the message to toggle the button if there's some new data and a new pose. So now putting the whole thing together, we're sending those OSC messages from the Python script from my pose, and operating the chases which think they're controlling disco lights, but they're actually controlling a robot. So you can see that the robot's mirroring me there, one arm up, one arm down and so on, and all of that stuff's good, and basically it dances so I don't have to. I've also got a function so when I turn my head, it does a little gesture to the left and a little gesture to the right depending on which way I'm turning it, and you can see that quite clearly and see that that DMX chase is getting selected in the top left panel as well. The robot currently mirrors what I do, so its right arm raises when my left arm raises, and for that reason I've actually mirrored the video preview of me, so I'm the right way round, and it looks like it's working. It would be good to have that mirrored in a preview the person sees at an event, so they actually don't get confused about which arm it is, but for now that'll do perfectly well.
So it's a simplistic approach, but it seems to work quite effectively, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now we could of course make the robot actually mirror us by doing some trigonometry on the node positions, working out the joint angles and reflecting that into the actual robot. Now this is a 2D robot because it only moves in one flat plane, and the data is 2D as well, so that'll work okay. The performance robots are 3D though, and they can move their arms all around like this, so that'd be quite difficult because we'd have to make some assumptions where the arms were posed if the person folded their elbows in front of them, so that's not going to be quite as easy. So for now, I'm just basically going to trigger the DMX chases that were triggered by the accessible interfaces from some poses in the skeleton tracking, and that's how the whole show's going to run. So we'd use probably one of those per robot, and then something else you don't have to touch to control all the lighting and sounds that are integrated with it as well, which are of course DMX and MIDI controlled. So pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to publish all the code for this that I've written and all of the CAD and code for this robot if you want to have a go at building your own and performance robots are already published on my GitHub. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then look at those links in the description as well and YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright that's all for now.